Welcome to Happy Today podcast. This is a podcast for those who want to improve service experience of internal services. If you use ServiceNow or other enterprise service management system, then this is for you. In this episode, Hashtag XLA. Most people understand XLA as focusing on the outcomes yeah. and experience-based outcomes. Hey, welcome to this episode of Happy Today podcast. Uh, now we're going to start the new series called Hashtag XLA. And the XLA comes from the words experience level agreement. I think it's a trending topic and we want to cover it actually not just in one episode, but in a series of, of episodes. And uh, yeah, what does XLA say to you, Sami? Like, where did you first hear it? And, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I first have to say that I really yeah. agree that this is something that is so much asked from us that how we define it. Yeah. And uh, not maybe a simple question, but kind of really it is, but let's get, come back to that in the later in this episode. But I think the first time I heard about it, was somebody gave me a tip in some event that check this company called Kiarte. And, and, and Marco Kianotten is the one that has first defined this term. Yeah. Excel, or at least their company has been talking about it longest, if I know right. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was like two years ago, we did a, a report with, with SDI. And then we actually came out and we were kind of hesitant of using the word XLA because we don't like three letter acronyms to be brutally honest. <laughs> uh, but I think now it's picking up. So, so it makes sense that we talk in the voice of the customer. True, true. So, so you know, no fighting against it. It is XLA nowadays. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah. But yeah, I guess uh, in this episode, let's first cover like the definition and also in metric sense, what two different uh, vendors, different people talk about it. And I think we did little research with you and uh, we, yeah. we tried to found, find out how people define. So I agree, let's start from, from Giarte since uh, they, they kind of also say that they are the founding fathers of XLA. So <laughs> let's give the credit to that one. So, yeah. so uh, how do they define? I think the main main definition, if I have understood right from from their how they say it, but is is that the first point they want to make is that it's not an agreement, <laughs> even though the name is an agreement, but it's not a kind of a okay. It is an agreement, but not the juridically way, uh, so that it would be kind of the sanction kind of stuff. Yeah, it is like the way of working from kind of the outcome perspective. Yeah. So focused on the outcome. I think everybody is explaining XLAs in that sense, in a similar way that it's focusing on the outcomes mm. and not focusing on on. Well, let's see how happens. they define yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So so that's like the the definition that that it is not an agreement, although kind of it is an agreement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but focusing on the outcome and, and what comes out should be the main focus. Yeah. 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 Uh, then there was like some interesting founds like uh, Deptive from actually from New Zealand saying that uh, experience level agreement uh, swings the focus to employee experience. So actually discovering how employees actually experience the utilization of technology. Uh, I think that's also really good. Again, it comes to the same, but they use a little bit different wording here. So again, shifting fro focus from uh, service reviews and penalties to continuous yeah. service and improvement. I think that's the key point again from uh, from Deptive that I picked up. Yeah, I think um, then I think one of the companies that is talking very much about this now is, is Citrus Collab. Yeah. And Alan Nance and Lisa Schwartz are talking about this. And I think they have about the same point there. They are thinking that this is changing how we do the design. So continuous service improvement is, is yeah. in, in the same area, but they are thinking that XLS are now changing the focus how we should in service management focus on again on the outcomes, but designing it from the perspective of end user experience. True. And, and couldn't agree more with yeah, that one. Yeah. And then uh, I, I went to our friends at ITSM Tool and there was a guest article from Hannah Price from Topdesk. And I think uh, what she said was that in the end, how did the customer feel? So again, yeah. coming to this kind of untangible thing, what experience really is. It is not, you know, humans are not computers, they are not robots, but they actually feel and experience things. And uh, I think that might be also sometimes a little bit difficult side of the XLA to IT people. Yeah, yeah. Because it's about emotions, untangible. But on the other hand, uh, I think, I don't remember who it was, but I also kind of said that on the other hand, services are 
untangible. So yeah. service is not something that you can kind of measure with as a robot or as a technology or as a process. So, yeah. yeah, I think one interesting point made by Fresh Service was was that when you have a critical incident, <laughs> nobody kind of remembers the commitment SLS. It's yeah. just the, the, the feeling goes over it. It doesn't matter if you have agreed something to be solved in two hours. If something is so critical to you, your your pain is true and it goes. And from, from their perspective, they're saying that that's the reason why XLAs are going over the traditional SLAs, why they yeah. are more important. Because check kind of a, at that critical moment, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you reach the SLA or not. True. Your customer will be anyway angry. They're not like, you cannot say, it, but we did solve it in two hours. Yeah, yeah, I think that doesn't was, help. Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody was exactly saying that that you know when it comes to the to the difficult moment, then uh, it doesn't really matter unless the experience is good and it, and the things get solved. Uh, there were also a few uh, few like uh, like uh, Next Think and uh, Lakeside, who are more measuring the, the devices. So I think then their definition it was still as an agreement. Yeah. So it was again a little bit. It may, it kind of makes sense because uh, they are measuring more of the devices, yeah. so how the devices are per performing and so. And that's that's then more fact based also. Because yeah. I think in the, in the in the kind of how I would define SLAs, it is motion based. Yeah. It is feeling. It is opinion. Yeah. SLAs is easy for us and IT because that's fact based. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened. Yeah. And and not that it was the outcome. It was something happening. Yeah. And, and that is a huge difference. Yeah. Maybe that actually takes us to, to the definition of the metrics. Because I think we, when we talk about metrics, it, it really depends. Are we talking in the context of service management or IT in some other context? Yeah. yeah. Or how would you say, how do you, how, what did you find? Still, still yeah. one, okay, okay, one, okay. one thing sure. I found in, the, in those yeah. was there was a PepsiCo guy who was oh, analyzing yeah. the I just love because everybody, if somebody have heard me speaking wherever, I hate yeah. SLAs. And this guy defined the letters. And this again. guy was Ahmed Al Hadidi. So, all right. Sorry for not remembering yeah. his name, but but he defined those three letters: SLA, secrets, lies, assumptions. And I just <laughs> kind of love it because it's, it tells what I feel about the SLAs. What happens to the organizations and the cooperation if you are only using those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. That's really good. So, secret, lies. And assumptions. assumptions yeah. Cool. We need to put that on the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. But then, then, like I said, uh, the second part of the episode was about the metrics, and that that I think uh, you need to take into the context. So I think what we are talking here is service management. Yeah. So again, uh, how would you define in Happy Signals the metrics? Then we can look how how other guys are defining. But Sami, what are the Happy Signals metrics for for XLA? Yeah. So. Of course, what we measure is the happiness of end user satisfaction after each incident or request, whatever enterprise service management area we are in. That is the kind of the perception, how they felt, how we help them. Yeah. But I think the other thing, what is really an XLA is also that we are asking from the end users, how much time did they lose because of a certain issue or request? Yeah. So how efficient we made it for them. And I think those are the two metrics in the service management that are really the dominating ones that we should be focused on. Yeah. And and well, that's that's how we define XLA. Yeah. And I agree because <laughs> with the productivity side, you, you can understand which services are the critical ones. Yeah. With SLAs, when you define them, you kind of define either, let's put this kind of SLA for this group of services and this kind of SLA for this group without actually asking from the end user, is this critical for you? Is this important for you? And when they say in our metric that they are losing time in certain services or using certain channels, exactly. it means that it is business critical for them. Yeah. Then you don't really care about those services where people don't report lost time because they are happy with those. Even if they wouldn't be too happy, they are still not losing productivity. So the experience for them doing their work is still pretty okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of one way to find the critical services if you don't know them from, yeah. from the start. Yeah. 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 But all right, let's let's look at how how other guys. So, uh, what about Giarte? So let's take first again. Uh, they had like index based on multiple aspects. So if we talk them through, so the product uh, proactivity of the provided service. Uh, what, what do you think about that? 
I think that is a good good point, and I, I think we kind of have that also in in our approach. Mm. We are having that as a fun one kind of a happy factor, as we yeah. call it. So that if the service was really kind of provided in a in a way that you didn't even expect that. Yeah. An easy example being that your hard drive is getting full, and the service desk will contact you and say that okay, hey, come here. There's a new yeah. hard drive for you waiting for you, or or yeah. some other ways they are helping you to. Yeah. to But then the rest are like uh, the extent to which we help clients to accelerate time to market. Again, a little bit about the lost time. Number three, uh, the number of relevant insights provided. Number four, the knowledge level of employees, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, it is something that even the services agent, if you don't teach your employees to use the IT, yeah. even the best support guys can't really make the Guy, the employees feel that they are knowledgeable if they haven't been. Yeah, dead. I think this yeah. is kind of a have to ask on the security guys because yeah. this are they now talking about the typical problem was asked when yeah. we are talking about the employees. Sometimes we are thinking our yeah. customers are thinking are we talking about the agents or end users? Yeah, the services and personnel or the thousands yeah. of employees that you yeah. have. And yeah. I think here the same thing goes that it, yeah. the knowledge on both sides is is important. True, and true. I think they might be now talking about the agents knowledge levels. Yeah, but. Yeah which has a huge yeah. influence on, on yeah i think let's try to get the gearte guys on on the on our podcast and uh, talk about their definition fully yeah, so so that's why i think yeah, true, i think today true. we kind of want to expose the different different aspects of it <clears throat> and the last one from them is the general quality of the service provided which i think for us is the happiness so yeah, yeah. were you happy or, or not um then what else did we find so uh I think uh, yeah, with top desk, Hannah Price was mentioning the kind of just having an, a satisfaction survey. So uh, it's she's saying that regular intervals. I think what our take is that every time, yeah, because you never know when you're having the bad experience and which is the service that you really need want to give feedback on. So. Yeah, and, and kind of giving that opportunity every time for end users to give that feedback. They will not do it every time. Yeah, but they want to have that opportunity. Yeah. And so don't be afraid of asking it. They will make mm. a decision if they have time for that or not. Yeah, yeah. And then, for example, next thing, they are approaching the XLA through in-depth scores and analytics. So they have like different kind of the device and, and network and, and that kind of things. So again, it's very, very technical. So yeah. that, that I think it makes sense to just combine those into, into one score that you take the network and the device and different types of, of things into it. So I think this whole topic is is so wide, and there's so yeah. much articles about it. Yeah. So I think now, to be honest, now when we are discussing this, kind of feels bad because we are not able to describe very very well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we will just collect a list under this this podcast or on our website. You yes. can find these articles from the others how they define it. Exactly, and then I, I think we'll try to get most of these people that we are mentioning to, into an interview, and then fully go into into insight. And I hopefully. Uh, during this spring uh, and summer, we have much more knowledge for our listeners about XLS. I think that's the thing. But as a summary, I think what seems to be the, the common trend is that seems like most people understand XLA as focusing on the outcomes yeah. and yeah. experience-based outcomes. So I think that's, that seems to be the common nominator anyway yeah. With, yeah. with everybody who, is, who are talking about XLS. But Outcomes, again, feelings, and and and, and yeah. I think that's those are the common common trends, and I think many are also defining it as not getting rid of those sanctions. Yeah. So that's a big difference between SLAs and XLAs that you focus on on the cooperation and and focus on the kind of the let's do it better together for the end users, not on kind of a you will be responsible for answering phone in this and this time. Yeah. Kind yeah. of discussions. Yeah. But as a as a like one definition, I think that's still. It's still undefined <laughs> as like a couple of sentences. So so outcome based, but there's not really like a common census consensus yet. Like what is the what is the XLA really? What is it if you make an XLA? What is what is it going to be? I think that's still the difficulty for our listeners and for our customers currently. Yeah, I think kind of there are many companies that have already defined in agreement level also how they will mm. describe this XLA to there. But there is no standard for it, yeah. and I'm not sure if there will be. Yeah. Uh, of course, we want to be the standard, but that's, <laughs> that's a different question. Yeah. Or our, our product has been used for that already, yeah. but but it's it's not it's not defined. And also, one thing is that 
will the XLA be only in service management and, and service mm. tech area? I think some are also taking it to a much wider area of, of IT, yeah, it's like, like Nextink and, and yeah. as I said, they are not only in the service management scope. Yeah, yeah. And that's also quite interesting to, to follow up. Yeah, and I think then uh, there are other companies that actually take it also to the customer side, so to the external customers. When you talk about customer experience, what is the experience level that we agreed to provide to the external customer. So yeah, yeah, it is a wide topic. Uh, we'll focus on the service management side and uh, we'll try to get a lot of interesting people here. Yeah. All right. I think that's a wrap. So uh, keep in touch. So whenever you see the hashtag XLA, it's about this topic. And I think the next one will try to go like, what are really the benefits? Now we have been talking about the, the what does it really mean? What is it? What it might not be? But then I think next we'll tackle a little bit on the on the benefits of it. Yep. All right. Cool. Thank you. Stay happy.